do you like your family? You like your job? Because in four more years of Biden, you're going to get hurt worse than you are now. Not a word from Biden about public disorder rising in almost every major city in the country. Not a word. Doesn't care, doesn't know. New York City, Chicago, Washington, Baltimore, they're all liberal progressives running it. You gotta vote them out. And then number two, you bring in people who are responsible and say, if you hurt another American, you're gonna pay a price every time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it through the week. It's about time to sit back and really kick in to that weekend vibe. And luckily, you're in the right place. The Sean Spicer Show is about to deliver for you, to get you ready for the weekend that you want. Bill O'Reilly is about to join us, and we cover a lot of ground. It's fun. He doesn't disappoint uh, on a lot of topics. Um, and he doesn't hold back. It's actually, um, we'll, we'll get to what we cover in just a sec. I do want to touch base. Yesterday, uh, when Alan Dershowitz was on the show, he mentioned um, E. Jean Carroll and this case, the defamation case against President Trump. She had 83 million bucks. I want to play for you what she said on the Rachel Maddow show. Take a listen. You've talked about using some of Trump's money that you're about to get um, to help shore up women's rights. Do you know what that might be, what that might look like? Yes, or, Rachel. Or, yes. Tell me. I had such, such great ideas <laughs> for all the good I'm going to do with this money. First thing, Rachel, you and I are going to go shopping. We're going to get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? <laughs> it's yours, Nothing. Rachel. Penthouse and uh, France? You want France? You want to go fishing nope. in France? No? Oh, all right, all right. Okay. That's a joke. Now, here's the thing. As a non-lawyer, I really didn't, I thought that was stupid. You sound giddy. But if you watch the interview with Alan Dershowitz, the thing that he pointed out was on appeal, they're going to use this. Why? And again, I learned a lot. I love having Alan Dershowitz on the show because I feel like it literally is like a, a Harvard law class. And even though I hate Harvard, you probably are pretty smart if you go there. And he always educates us on the law and what we need to know. And here's why. She's suing him on defamation. Like she's saying... I got hurt because of the things you said about me, right? Remember, there were two issues here, the sexual assault piece, but then the defamation piece. And that's what these damages were really focused on. You hurt my reputation by attacking me. It's damaged my ability to make a living and et cetera, my reputation. And here she is joking about all of the things that she's going to buy and do. Well, Dershowitz was right. I mean, they're going to look and say, oh, well, you're writing a book. You're going to do all this stuff. You're famous. You're a public figure. Uh, you're talking about buying condos. And you heard the lawyer there at the end being like, this is just a joke. Because the lawyer knew. And I wondered at the time, did the lawyer just think it was inappropriate? But after hearing Alan Dershowitz's take, I realized the lawyer knows exactly what Alan Dershowitz was telling us. That was a dumb move. And the thing that's so funny is I always wonder when these people get on, uh, you know, morning shows or talk shows, they got their lawyer sitting next to them. I always wonder if that's just like an attempt to get a billable hour. Because in that case, E. Jean Carroll was going off. The lawyer should have stepped in. I mean, why do you have them there? I mean, I think the lawyers just want to be there to get the, the fame and the attention. But they're supposed to be serving a purpose. And if I were her lawyer, I would have jumped in earlier and said, OK, let's let's change subject. She didn't say it until the end. And I think that's because she realized this is not going well. It's going to hurt us on appeal. I mean, going shopping, you get a complete wardrobe, a motorcycle, fishing rod. I mean, it just, it, it, it didn't sound good. And it, uh, when you have a judgment that one of the jurors at least admitted they were trying to send a message, $83 million for defamation. And you're going out there acting like this. It's not, I, 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 like I said, more than anything, I learned a lot from Alan Dershowitz's analysis. And when you now look at the context of the comments, it makes sense. Hey, guys, uh, as a former White House press secretary and a graduate of the U.S. Naval War College, I spent a lot of time thinking through contingency planning. And there's nothing better that you can do for yourself and your family and your loved ones 
than getting the Patriot Power Generator 2000X. When something goes wrong, a natural disaster, some other thing that attacks our power grid, you will be prepared. The Patriot Generator 2000X is the perfect thing for your house, your family. You can plug in everything, a refrigerator, so if you have medical supplies or food, you will be prepared. All of those other tablets and computers, things that are helpful for you and your family, the Patriot Power Generator 2000X takes care of it. The best part about it is it's portable. You can bring it in your house. You can take it with you on a trip, run it out of your car at a campsite. It doesn't matter. Put it literally in your house and on the counter and power the fridge. You can do it. Plus, it operates off a solar panel which comes free with your order. You will be prepared. No running to the gas station, no worrying about anything else. The Patriot Power Generator 2000X is your hedge against the inevitable. Go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer to get yours now. As I mentioned, Bill O'Reilly's gonna join us. I wanted to cover a lot of ground with him because I always appreciate Bill's take, right? You know him uh, formally as the host of The O'Reilly Factor. If you watch us, on the first network on direct TV, channel 347, you know that Bill uh, Bill comes on right after us. So we're at seven o'clock, Bill is on earlier. If you're watching us on Rumble or YouTube or Apple or Spotify, then thank you and I appreciate that, but you don't see it. But on the first network, he comes in. So I always joke that I'm the Bill O'Reilly warm up act, the lead in to Bill O'Reilly. Um, but, he is now the host of the No Spin News. He's got a newsletter and the guy puts out like a book almost as much as Dershowitz does. The difference is, and again, they're both bestsellers. I admire them for that. O'Reilly sells books like no one else. They all go nuts. This guy is a machine. And it's funny, I've published four books. One's been on the New York Times bestseller list. I remember what it took to do that. He puts a book out there and it just skyrockets. And People, I think, appreciate the subjects he covers, the way he covers the subject, and how he backs it up. And by the way, you're about to get a special little treat because he announces his next project here. Pretty cool. Uh, and at the end of the interview, he'll walk through what that effort is. But I always appreciate, I've followed Bill for a long time, and I've always appreciated his take on, on big issues, right? And he's known Trump forever, so he can really speak to Donald Trump, the person, and his personality. And I wanted to get his take on the presidential race, um, Trump as a person and the tactics, because there are days in which the thing that, if you've done what I've done for a living, you realize politics is a game of addition. Sometimes you suck it up because you need to grow. And some of the attacks, I get it. It's who he is, who Donald Trump is. But you've got to win. If we don't win this election, too much is at stake. And so there are days in which I get upset not because I disagree, but I'm like, hey, we need those votes. We need to, if we don't win, if we don't take over and we don't win decisively, that's key, then we get nothing. No agenda, no personnel, no policy, and frankly, no country. So I, I, I get really torn sometimes when I get why Trump says what he says. I do, I mean, like I know why he does it. I remember one time in the White House, we had asked him not, he was kept the, I wouldn't say threatening. He doesn't threaten, but he, he kept saying, I'm going to, I have to react. I'm going to do this. And he walks downstairs. I saw him first thing in the morning. He looks at me and he goes, Sean, don't even say it. I had to do it. He sent this tweet out. And it was just, it's classic Trump. He was like, I had to do it. It's like, well, sir. And he was like, no, I had to do it. But it's who he is. It's part of his thing. But there are days when it frustrates you because you realize that we need to be growing. And uh, anyway, and I also know that for a lot of people, that's what they find attractive about him. They like the fact that he speaks authentically and that he punches first. But there are days in which I think that some of these elections, I pointed out 40,000 votes over three states, 70,000 over three states in 2016, way too close. And we need to send a decisive message. And so that's, that's my personal thing. Anyway, we covered a lot of ground with Bill O'Reilly. Let's get into it. Bill, uh, welcome back to the show. I want to get your take on what's going on in the presidential race. It seems pretty obvious. President Trump is headed to his third nomination. Nikki Haley sticking around. What 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 is she? I can't figure it out for the life of me. What what is she hoping to get? Well, she's running uh, for next time around, Sean. Um, so in uh, 
28, she'll be the leading contender. Um, or, you know, depending on who Trump picks as vice president this time around, if Trump wins. But that's what she's doing. She's establishing uh, herself as a, a power in the Republican Party. She raised a lot of money. Um, she really doesn't have anything else to do. Um, why not run? If, if Republican billionaires are going to fund her to the extent they are, why not run? So that's what she's doing. She's laying the groundwork for a future um, successful run at the presidency. The thing that's interesting, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, she's she's got the money. They they keep throwing cash at her. So yeah. it's like, why not? But but the thing is, I feel like she's upsetting more of the base that she would need in the future needlessly. Well, I don't know about needlessly. Um, she doesn't have the profile nationally to mount a presidential campaign at this time. But she will be more well known. And, you know, people's memories are short. So, yeah, they're, she's teeing off some MAGA people now. But I don't mind it. I, I, I like competition in the political area. Um, I think she's run a pretty good campaign myself. She's organized, uh, gets her points across. So what? Let Donald Trump, uh, you know, slug it out for a few weeks. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I do like his approach, which is don't hand this to me. I'll win it the old fashioned way. And I think that was smart of him because if people believe that there was a coronation, that he would have an excuse not to vote for him. But what is fascinating, you talk, she stayed in, DeSantis got out. There's a lot of postmortem discussion about how he ran his campaign. I will admit, considering the job that he did in Florida and the record he had, the campaign that he ran did not match the record that he had as governor. And there was this disconnect between presenting a guy that actually got a lot done, uh, stood up to corporations, was great during COVID, and the guy who presented himself as a presidential candidate. Well, it's because he doesn't have the personality to go out and convince people to vote for him. So as a technician, He's excellent. I think Florida's really run well, yeah. despite the fact that they they uh, pulled two of my books out of the Pensacola Library, <laughs> Killing Jesus and Killing what? Reagan. Yeah, you know, come on, you you looked that story up. We made a big deal out of that. Somebody abused the law up there in, in Florida, and DeSantis wouldn't uh, do what he should have done by condemning it. It was preposterous. It but is? anyway, you know politicians are very good technicians but they can't sell themselves. They don't have the personality to do it. He always looked uneasy, always looked awkward, doesn't ad lib well. And he's up against the master, Trump. Yeah. So he's, he's looking like he's uh, in double uh, A baseball. And so take, to him. take Trump's potential VP out of the mix for just a second. You mentioned what you think about Nikki Haley's future. There's a lot of talk, obviously, that he did, he dropped out when he did to preserve any shred of future political options. If it's DeSantis, and I'm just, I get it. We're just pl having fun here on a Friday. If it's DeSantis versus Haley, I, I, does she have the personality versus he's got the record? Well, I mean, it'll be a much closer race. There's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis got to get a charisma injection somehow. They'll probably have that four years from now. You can take a pill and you'll get charisma. He doesn't have any, <laughs> doesn't have any personal charisma. Yeah. And in, in the United States of show business, I mean, you need it now. Yeah. Um, I, I... So that, that it was his problem. All right, folks, if you've been watching the show for a while, you've heard me talk about my friend, Leo Grillo. He rescued a Doberman years ago, and he named the dog Delta. Delta stands for dedication and everlasting love to animals. He took it a step further. He founded Delta Rescue, and if you go to deltarescue.org, you can see some of the amazing work that they do. Just check out those videos. Look at some of the things that they do and the research. It's amazing. It's a no-kill sanctuary. You notice I didn't say shelter. It's a sanctuary, dogs, cats, horses. They all roam free. They get the nutrition and the care they need for life. That has been Leo's mission, but it doesn't stop there. Leo wants to make this an enduring mission. All of Delta Rescue runs on our contributions, five, 10, a hundred, a thousand dollars, whatever you can do. But Leo really wants to make sure that this outlasts even him. 
So if you go to deltarescue.org, you can check out not just the videos, but go to the estate planning kit and think about whether or not helping animals and ensuring that Delta Rescue lives on is part of your mission as well. Go to deltarescue.org, make a contribution, but then download that estate planning kit deltarescue.org. Check it out now. So let's get on to the reality of this race. Uh, there's a series of polls that came out in key states this week that showed that asked voters a simple question. Were you better off under Trump or Biden? And by far, every one of them by at least 10 points says Trump. I yeah. have propositioned that this is a very simple election in terms of messaging. Here's what the domestic record is under Trump. Here's what it is under Biden. Here's what's going on in the foreign policy area versus in Trump versus Biden. I get that it should be that easy. There are a lot of people that I talk to, and I guarantee you if I'm talking to them, then you're talking to smarter and bigger and better people that don't like Trump's style. And that is the one thing that's standing between them. What do you tell people, if anything, when they say to you, Bill, I get the record. I just don't like the style and the optics of Donald Trump. I don't tell them anything. I mean, they have a right to their opinion. I, look, I've known Trump so long that I'm probably numb to what he says. <laughs> I don't care what he says as long as it is not hurting the country. So, for example, um, you're correct and you were part of it. Donald Trump ran the country fairly well for four years. You, the measures are there. You see it. Biden is a disaster. I'm writing a book called Confronting the President's No Spin uh, Assessments from Washington to Biden, and Biden's the second worst president in our history. Who's one? And he's sinking. Uh, James Buchanan, the uh, guy before Lincoln who totally botched the run-up to the Civil War, is worse. Um, but Biden has early-stage dementia, so you got to know that's what you're voting for. And there isn't any measure that he succeeded in. I right. mean, I, I'm still investigating the prescription drug thing. I want to be fair, but the guy is just, he's drowning. So when people say, look, I don't want to vote for Trump because I don't like him, I understand. But I then say to them, do you like your family? You like your job? Because in four more years of Biden, you're going to get hurt worse than you are now. That's yeah, well, what I, I say. Well, and that's the point. I think you, so that you do make a case, clearly a compelling one, because I think that's the point here. People have to understand that, what, you know, whether it's safety in their community, the economy and their job and their economic security, the security of our country, that there is a lot at stake. Um, and, and that it's not, if you, if you have a problem with his style, with Trump's style, I get it. Uh, as Tim Scott put it this weekend on a Sunday show, he said something the effect of, you know, the president and I don't share the same disposition when it comes to words. But the policy matters. It affects our life, our community, and our country. And that should make a difference. Sure. And that's the way, it, that's my approach to it. See, I'm, I, again, I, I just, it, it's annoying when Donald Trump will make fun of Nikki Haley's dress. It's unnecessary. It's an unforced error. Why are you doing that? You're trying to convince women to vote for you. You don't comment on women's clothing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows that. But Trump does what he wants, says what he wants, and he justifies it by saying, I've been successful. So why should I change? That's it. I got it. But we are now at a crossroads in this country. Joe Biden is a horrendous president. I mean, it is, it is far worse than most people know. He is not in control of that process. He's being run by the furthest left elements of the progressive party. He's doing what he's told to do. He can barely find out where he is from hour to hour. And this is what you're going to vote for again? I, I, I think it's crazy. Yeah. And one of the biggest concerns that I have right now is, is the policy uh, at the border. Uh, there's a political aspect to this. I think Joe Biden wants to pretend and wink and nod at suburban women and uh, you know, I'm going to shut down the border. But he knows that his party won't doesn't want that. So he's letting people come in the country. I believe it's to allow future voters. But that doesn't matter. I mean, the bottom line is he has allowed the border to be open, allowing fentanyl, allow terrorism 
to come into the border. I believe that Republicans are mismessaging this entire thing. This is a national security issue. I posed this earlier in the week to Chad Wolf, the former acting uh, Homeland Security under Trump, but I said, Republicans should just simply proposition Democrats by saying, how many terrorists are acceptable to come into the country, full stop, and have a debate about security as opposed to immigration, which is we've gotten trapped into. So to me, we are falling short of the messaging when it comes to the border. What do you say? Maybe, maybe, but look, if you don't know you, the American voter, by now, what a disaster the Biden Borden policy is across the board, narcotics, national security, draining treasuries in every major city, crime. We just had here in New York City two police officers attacked by five migrants who were then immediately let out on the street, no bail. And that's another progressive thing. If you don't know how bad it is, you're never going to know. Yeah. All right. 55% of the Democratic Party, according to a, lady, uh, a new poll, want open borders. That's where I would go if I were Republicans. I would say, look, you don't know, you, don't, you think the border is okay? That's on you. But this party, 55% of them want this. Yes. You can't vote for that party. That's how I would frame it. You know, you, you mentioned that Biden's not in control. Number one, who do you think is in control? And number two, there's a lot of folks out there, I disagree with them, that believe that Michelle Obama is the stalking horse, that they're going to somehow remove him and put him in. So explain to me who you think is in, in charge, number one. And number two, do you think that Joe Biden ultimately becomes the nominee of the Democratic Party this November? Okay. So when Ron Klain and Susan Rice left the White House, knowing that it was a disaster, by the way, that's why they both left, their deputies took over. Right. They're invisible people. I don't even know their names. All right. They get checked in um, by the Secret Service every morning. They go to an office. They have little meetings in the West Wing where you worked. Okay. Biden's nowhere to be found, nowhere to be seen. They come up with, this is what we're going to do. Here's what Joe is going to say. We're going to write this speech for Joe. They present it to Joe and Joe does it. Who they are, I don't even know. But they are the deputies of Klain and Rice, okay, who came from the Obama administration, as you know. Now, <clears throat> it's not hard for Joe Biden to do what Lyndon Johnson did. All he has to do between now and the convention is write a letter that says, I'm gonna serve out my term, but I can't run again because of medical situations. And I'm gonna give all my delegates to Whitmer of Michigan or Michelle Obama or whomever the cabal decides has a better chance against Trump than Biden. It won't be Kamala Harris. She's a disaster. Okay. So that's an easy play. And they've got, what, seven months now to figure this out. Can they persuade Michelle Obama to get in here? Because she would get all Biden delegates, walk in at the convention. You got the nomination, Michelle. We'll see you in November. That's how it will work. Yeah, I, I will agree with you on the convention part of this. I think that's that's the key that everyone's got to keep their eye on in August. Uh, I've got my own theory. I think the Biden-Obama tension is so bad, they don't want, they, they're mad at Obama for screwing him over in 16 versus Hillary, and and they don't want to be seen as getting bailed out by the by the Biden, by the Obamas. Anyway, I, I but I do agree with you. I think this is uh, coming down to... Uh, to the convention and that's where every eye needs to be. All right, I'm gonna ask you a question that I'm embarrassed to ask you, but I want, but go, but I was excited that you were gonna be on the show because I think this is absolutely silly and I have a lot of faith in Bill O'Reilly uh, and, and your take on this. But this idea that people on the right all week long have somehow, you talk about a cabal, have now convinced themselves that Taylor Swift is going to parachute herself into the Super Bowl, stop the game, 
endorse Joe Biden in the middle and this is going to change the election to me is one of the dumbest things that we as the folks on the right are associated with now. Uh, I just I think it 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 doesn't pass the smell test. It's stupid. The idea that people are going to suddenly wake up and go, oh, my God, Taylor Swift told us who to vote for. Not to mention all the logistical things. The reason I care about this, though, is because I think it makes our side look stupid. What do you think? Well, the Biden people couldn't get Frankie Avalon to endorse them. So they're trying to get Taylor Swift. (laughs) So Taylor Swift, excuse me, is the biggest entertainer in the world. Fair enough. And the National Football League is capitalizing on that to try to get more women to watch the Super Bowl by cutting away to the booth where Taylor Swift jumps up and down every time her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, on the Kansas City Chiefs, touches the ball. I'm not offended by any of that. I would rather see Taylor Swift jumping up and down than some sweaty behemoth covered with tattoos drinking Gatorade. (laughs) Right? If I got a choice of two cutaways, I'll take Tay-Tay over the sweaty behemoth. Okay. (laughs) Who Taylor Swift endorses doesn't really matter to anybody but Taylor Swift, or maybe Travis. I don't know Travis' politics, I don't know him. So people who actually get involved emotionally with this kind of dumbness, (laughs) all right, they have to live in their own world, all right? To me, (laughs) it's just funny. It's very humorous. I would say to Taylor Swift, if she's watching us tonight, Go a little she lighter is. on the on the lips gloss. I, I the, the lips are a little too uh, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show for me. Uh, just bring it down a little bit. But other than that, have a blast. Bill O'Reilly, fashion tips. Hey folks, are you looking to secure your financial future? I know during the Biden economy, that's something that all of us are trying to do more. I've added precious metals to my investment strategy. And the people that I trust to do that are the folks at Bishop Gold Group. Now, if you go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean, you can begin your journey as well with a special promotion. Or you can give them a call at 844-984-1616. These are the people that I picked up the phone. I called them. I walked through my particular situation and we came up with a strategy. Now, maybe you have an IRA that you want to roll over. Maybe you just want to diversify your investments. But people at Bishop Gold Group are the people that I trust. Give them a call or go to the site bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean. You get on the phone, you talk about your particular situation, and they'll help you come up with a strategy. Maybe you keep some of the gold with you. Maybe they do it for you, but you can work with them one-on-one to come up with a strategy that's good for you. So go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean to begin your journey to financial freedom through precious metals. The last thing I want to cover with you is a little more serious. And then, uh, but in, in, I live outside of Washington, DC, uh, over the last 12 months, the crime in Washington, DC has skyrocketed like never before. And I think that cities across just the this week uh, a former staffer from trump was carjacked but here's the kicker bill and this is what troubles me it's youth violence it's youth carjacking it's youth crime and when they s- talk about folks uh that have been subject to this on the media they keep saying we just don't know what the answer is we don't know what to do because these kids aren't subject to the same penalties and the same laws and they get out the mayor of dc is clueless they're handing out air tags, literally handing out air tags. So when your car gets stolen, the cops can go get the car from the person that won't go to jail. But I, I do, what, what concerns me more than the crime is who's committing it. We have now a, a, these youngsters who are committing crimes and, and no one in this city has a clue how to handle it. Well, who's in charge of Washington, D.C.? That would be President Biden. The District of Columbia is run by the feds. All Muriel Bowser, the mayor, does is just push, hire people and make sure that the metro runs. So <laughs> not, not, a not, word, well. <laughs> not a word from Biden about public disorder rising in almost every major city in the country. Not a word. Doesn't care. Doesn't know. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't concern him. He right. takes a helicopter from the South Lawn, goes to... Uh, 
um, you know, Camp David or uh, Andrews Air Force Base, takes a helicopter back. I didn't see any of this. Look, when you have a society where there is crime but no punishment, you're going to have more crime. All right? And the kids know it. They know they're not going to get in trouble. They're not held accountable by their parents, by the schools, by the authorities. So they're going to go out and do it. Shoplift? Yeah. Why not? It's not like these kids have sturdy upbringings, a moral foundation. They don't. And I'm generalizing now. Right. But there are enough of them to cause mayhem. Well, where is my was at? When I was a kid growing up, the, theory, the, the theme was crime doesn't pay. I was out walking my, with my wife the other night. We were talking about this. And I said, the difference now is that crime does pay. Yeah. Right. What, what job pays. can you do? You steal a car, you sell it. Let's call it 500 bucks. Where else can you make 500 bucks in two hours? And, and again, it does pay because you're, even if you get caught, they'll let you go. The, the, let me pose it back to you though. Here's what I, I, I get it. What is the solution? Because everyone in this city that, again, I don't live in it. I live outside of it, but wrings their hands at it and says, Oh my, what do we do? And I'm like, what do you mean you do? I'll give you a list, increase penalties, start throwing the kids in jail, find out what the deal is with their parents. But I mean, we have all thrown our hands up in this area looking at what the, the elected officials included. And I get the Biden point. You're absolutely right. But what is the solution so that we th- this doesn't go on infinitum? Well, number one, you have to vote out progressive liberal leadership that doesn't believe in punishing crime. Because that's the thing that unites all of these cities. San Francisco completely falling apart. New York City, Chicago, Washington, Baltimore. They're all liberal progressives running it. So you got to vote them out. And then number two, you bring in people who are responsible and say, if you hurt another American, you're going to pay a price every time. Now, the price escalates. But the real problem here is twofold derelict parents, and we have millions of them in America, and the government can't do anything about them, who don't raise their children uh, at all, don't care about their children, abuse their children, and drug addiction, which drives most of street crime. And I did my thesis at Harvard on uh, the Singapore model of handling drug addiction. If you are uh, found to be using drugs by getting uh, a test by the authorities in Singapore, you go to rehabilitation for 22 months. You're forced to go. Takes the market away, all right? There are many, many innovative crime-solving techniques, but the progressive left doesn't believe in punishing people who commit crimes. And that's what we have, why we have what we have. All right, uh, we lead into you every night on the first. Uh, so I'm excited that when we end this, We'll have more Bill O'Reilly coming our way uh, if you're watching this on the first on DirecTV. Real quick before you go, tell me about what's the latest book you just, you mentioned it. When does it come out? What's the title and can we pre-order it? Yeah, uh, Confronting the Presidents. No spin assessments from Washington to Biden. Everyone, whether these men hurt or helped their country, who they were, how they behaved, Every page, the stuff you don't know. Oh, George cool. Washington's mother did not like him. Washington didn't go to her funeral. What? Did you know that? No. No, you did not. Okay. That's the book. It'll be out in September to the run-up to our presidential election. You can pre-order it on BillOReilly.com. You don't have to pay till we ship. But you get on the list. This is going to be an enormous book huge, wow. a controversial book, because on every page, there's stuff going, whoa. But we all back it up as we all do. You know, I'm the most successful nonfiction author in the world. Yeah. And the reason is because we come up with stuff that nobody knows, and then we drive a narrative that makes it fun to read. And so Confronting the Presidents fits into that category. Well. Wow. You have done a phenomenal job in all of the past ones. I'm sure this one will be just as successful. Uh, And now I'm even more excited. I just don't want to wait till September to read it. Bill O'Reilly, always a pleasure having you on and excited to be the warm-up act for you on the first. Thank you, Sean. Stay strong. All right, see you soon. All right, interesting. Let's start with the politics of that. I'm intrigued by Bill's take on Nikki Haley. 
I truly am. Um, I just don't see her running again in 2028. And I actually think that's the opposite. That's why she's staying in because she realizes she's got nothing to lose and there is no 2028. I think DeSantis got out, as I said, because he thinks he does have a future. Now, whether you agree or not with, with me on this, the bottom line is I think that that's why she's staying in and why DeSantis got out the way he did. But Nikki Haley needs a base. Anyone needs a base. And this MAGA base is key. And right now, I, I get it. It's four years from now, but people are going to be, they're not going to forgive. They're not going to forget. She's done. And that's why she's running because she has nothing else to do. She's already been governor twice. She was in the cabinet. She ain't coming back. He's made that clear. She's not going to be vice president. So she has nothing to lose. On the Democrats. Now, I've said this before. I, I get, I, so you heard what I said to Bill. I think that this comes down to the convention. If you want to focus on one period in time, focus on the Dem convention in Chicago this August. That's, that's the entire ball game. Either they keep him on the ticket or he yields, but that's it. Because those are the rules. They can't, there is no, there, there is no Illuminati that's going to come in and change the ballots. Once you get the Democrat, the, the, all the delegates, you're the nominee. Then it's him's to decide. There's no replacing him unless he steps down at the convention. I've made this case before, so let me make it again and be clear so that it's on the record for the 18th time. It's not going to be Michelle Obama. The Bidens do uh, detest what the Obamas did to them in 2016. He remember, he said, you can't run, Joe. I'm handing this to Hillary. Thanks. And Biden never forgot that. He had been the loyal vice president for eight years and you set him aside and hand it to Hillary, who then loses to Trump. And Biden has never forgot that. There's this tension between those two that's palpable. And you hear it now, the Biden people, the Obama people griping about how they're running the, the reelect and they should do this and they should do that. The Biden people really chafe at the fact that they got screwed by Obama. They do. And they're not going to hand something off to Michelle Obama like you're the savior. Oh, thanks for saving us. No way. Joe Biden, I wrote my entire book called Radical Nation on this. He is dead set on becoming the North Star the most progressive president ever. He said it. That was his stated goal. And he's done this over and over again, not by accomplishment, by appointment. Pete Buttigieg, the first LBDTQIAC253PO department head in the cabinet. Remember, Rick Cornell was in the cabinet, but he wasn't a department head. That's a side note. This is all a game to them about becoming an, you know, the first four-star uh, transgender person the first black gay press secretary, female, right? It's all about identity politics. He wants to nominate the first black female president. So if he steps aside, he can name Kamala Harris. Will she win? No, she'll get crushed. But in his mind, that's the goal and that's how he's going to achieve it. So if he's not on the ballot, it's going to be her. Trust me, they're not handing this off to somebody else. He believes this is his mantle to pass on. He wants to be the person that for life, for history, is the one that can say, I, Joe Biden, made that happen. The first female of color is because of me, Joe Biden. I did that. And he's not going to abdicate the ability to become the progressive North Star. He wants credit for that. He knows it's not going to be, you know, legislative or policy accomplishments. My goodness. But I, I raised interest rates more than anyone else. I threw the economy into a tank. I let the southern border go. For him. I mean, he has no other uh, issue. So that's that's what I will tell you on that. The other thing that I, I was ex interested to get um, Bill's take on is this crime issue. I don't know if you if you don't live in a city. I just I don't know if you can relate or not. Uh, we live you know several miles outside of DC. But I drive in there once, twice a week to meet for lunch or meetings or whatever. It's scary. And I talked to a member of Congress the other day. Three members of their staff have been carjacked. Take a look at this. Look at the, the chart on the screen from the Metropolitan Police Department. These are kids. They carjacked an FBI agent. 
They carjacked a member of Congress, Henry Cuellar from Texas, who was carjacked. He jokes that his sushi got taken. But this is serious. This guy the other day, let me just pull this up because this is unbelievable. Mike Gill is carjacked in D.C. He is in critical condition. He's a former member of President Trump's administration in critical condition after his family said he was shot during a deadly night of carjacking. Gill, who worked at the Commodity Future Trading Commission during the Trump administration, according to his LinkedIn profile and reports from other local outlet WTOP, was attacked on Monday outlet. According to Fox 5, the D.C. station here, Gill's family confirmed that the incident occurred at the 900 block of K Street Northwest around 545. Stop. 545 p.m. Now, that's dark right now, but I mean, it's still not like pitch dark. This is 545. It's not even dinner time. The 900 block of K Street, folks, this is downtown D.C. We're not off in some remote place. This is downtown D.C. where the big buildings is K Street. You've heard of it. The lobbyists and all that. That's right there. This guy gets shot in critical condition. He has a family in broad, I mean, broad, I mean, you know, not daylight, but it's dark. It's, it's evening. What the heck is going on? You know, there's always these areas of the city where they say, oh, don't go over there. Don't go over there. Every city has them. This isn't that. This is downtown D.C. There's you, you, every single day. Check out these charts. I mean, it's crazy. And right now, carjackings are up 104 percent and police say that the volume is overwhelming. More than 800 have occurred in 2023. 400 occurred in 2022. So that's double in one year. 2024 is not exactly starting off strong. And one of the, uh, according to Fox 5, a report that happened, says uh, this police officer, Scott Dowling, Lieutenant Scott Dowling of the Metropolitan Police Department, says that there's often a lot of juvenile repeat offenders. This is his quote. For juveniles specifically, it depends on what their record is and if they're going to get detained or not. And if it's their first or second offense, they won't get detained. And then they're out. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's only your first offense carjacking. Oh, it's your second. Go ahead. Come back when it's your third or fourth. I mean, this is, and and the police officer says this right here. If they choose to do it again, that's why they choose to do it. 66% of these arrests are juveniles. What, What is going on? One of the parents that they interviewed on television, he was a foster parent. He said, the problem is there's no consequences. I said it to Bill, it pays. Tell me what job you're going to do right now where you can make that kind of money. And if you know that the worst that's going to happen is not even a slap on a wrist, they might give you a high five these days the way DC's going. This is crazy. All right. The last thing I wanted to just touch on, and I didn't get to it with Bill, is Mark Zuckerberg and the other tech titans were testifying in front of Congress. They got crushed. But here's the thing. And I think Facebook deserves their fair share of criticism, if not more. I'm going to give Mark Zuckerberg some credit. Josh Hawley went after him. Let me play this for you. And look at what Zuckerberg does. So you didn't take any action. You didn't take any action. You didn't fire anybody. You haven't compensated a single victim. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. There's families of victims here today. Have you apologized to the victims? Would you like to do so now? Well, they're here. You're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims who have been harmed by your product? Show them the pictures. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? I'm going to give Zuckerberg credit. I guarantee you his consultants didn't tell him that. He gets up and at least he says, I apologize and I don't want families to go through. Do I think he me? I don't, look, all I'm saying is from a PR standpoint, all right, he gets a little bit of credit. I'm talking that much, not much. The idea that he at least faced them, he could have sat there at that witness table and just looked forward. He didn't. I'll give him credit for that. Like I said, I'm not talking about a lot of credit, but if you were a coach, you were told, hey, stay focused, don't answer, you know, Keep your, he at least gave those parents some acknowledgement that they, that he understood to some minute degree the pain that they're suffering. But I, I was actually shocked at the scope of this. And some of these senators, yeah, were they grandstanding? Absolutely. 
Are they doing anything? No, they could have banned TikTok. They haven't. I mean, so again, let's be honest about what's really happening here. They want a lot of credit. Anyway, last thing I'll just say, have a great weekend. We have a big week ahead for you. Stephen Miller is going to be here. Um, we are going to talk to Governor Mike Huckabee, Victor Davis Hanson. So much going on. Uh, have a great weekend. Make sure you hit that subscribe and notification button because you don't want to miss anything. We'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.